Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. And uh, in today's session, I'm going to restart the reading series that I was doing with you of Eon and of philosophy, etc. related to that. So uh, let's start off immediately with, uh, without any further delay. I'll just share my screen and start off. So this uh, particular uh, reading that we are going to be doing today of philosophy is related to now uh, Renaissance. And it's talking about uh, what happened during the Renaissance. And uh, so it uh, talks about that Renaissance philosophy started in the mid, uh, now Renaissance is rebirth, right? So after the dark ages, when everything had stopped, uh, that is art and culture and science had all stopped, then uh, there was a revolution and people started saying that we need uh, art and culture and science and literature. And then again, the rebirth of art started together with it. And that period of awakening or rebirth was uh, called as the Renaissance. And it comes from the French word, which means a rebirth or a new beginning. So Renaissance philosophy started in the mid 14th century and saw the flowering of humanism. Um, humanism is the concept which talks about that human beings and their thoughts are the most important, does not give so much importance to religion and ethics and philosophy, etc. So human beings and their thoughts and their values are more important. That's what humanism talks about. The rejection of scholasticism, scholasticism and Aristotelianism, the renewal of an interest in the ancients and created the prerequisites for modern philosophy and science. So here we are talking about that uh, humanism as a philosophy started after the Renaissance and it rejected scholasticism, scholasticism which focused more details on theoretical things and things that were related to the church or Christianity or religion and of ancient Greek Aristotelianism and a different kind of philosophy. And it renewed the interest in the ancients and created the prerequisites for modern philosophy and science. So here we are talking about modern philosophy and science that started. And uh, the topic, as you know, is talking about that there was no such thing as Renaissance philosophy. So exactly what was it? But in fact, so at least this is the conventional story. So conventional means the traditional story that is talked about, that after the Renaissance philosophy, after the Renaissance movement, this kind of humanistic approach started, which did not focus so much on scholasticism. But in fact, there was no Renaissance. Now they are saying that the Renaissance as a concept did not happen at all in uh, literature or philosophy. It's an invention by historians, a fiction made in order to tell a story. So they are saying that it's all, uh, you know, made up by people who wrote history and it's fiction, it's man-made, it's not in reality, it never happened. A compelling story and it's just made to make a compelling story. A compelling means a story which is very, very uh, makes you believe something. And uh, about the development of philosophy, but nevertheless a story. So it's still a story, it's not fact, it's fiction and that's what they say. In fact, all period, periodization is mere interpretation. So they are saying that this, uh, the culture and literature and philosophy are divided in different periods of uh, thought. They are all interpretations. Actually, there was nothing as such. And this view is called as the historiographical nihilism. Now, nihilism is when you negate something, when you say, no, this does not happen. So historiographical nihilism means according to history, whatever has been said about these different periods and the philosophy of those periods that did not exist. So if historically you are negating everything, that is why it is called as historiographical nihilism. Now historiography for a long time was simply the writing of history. So historiography was writing of history. That's what it means. Sweden, for example, had a royal uh, historiographer who, which was a formal appointment at the royal court. So he was supposed to write the historical happenings and the important, you know, uh, documentation of events, etc. For a period in the late 17th century, the position was held by philosopher Samuel Pufendorf. So he was in the royal court of Sweden. He wrote several books in Latin on the history of Gustav, the two uh, Adolf's war efforts in Europe, 
and during the Thirty Years' War, as well as one about Queen Christianica's, Christi Christina's abdication. So here, abdication of the throne, she gave up the throne. So he wrote the facts about all of these historical happenings. Now, recently, historiography has become more of a study of how history is written. So now historiography is no longer actually the history of writing, rather how it was written. And in the second sense, it works. The works, it is the works of historians and their methods that are objects of study and not history itself. So in this new avatar of uh, historiography, uh, it, it is uh, historiography, it is actually the study of the objects of history, the historians who wrote history and not the reality of history, not history itself. A historiographer doesn't write histories, but develops theory about how history is written. So now they are talking about theories, how history was written in those times, what things were written, what things were omitted and what really happened. Nihilism, of course, has been given many meanings and has been interpreted in many different ways by philosophers throughout history. Now, nihilism, the uh, philosophy of negating everything, saying that this did not exist, there was nothing here. This has been given many different interpretations. In the context of historiography, it means the rejection of, or in a slightly weaker form, the skepticism. So in the source, uh, here in the context of historiography, nihilism is talking about the skepticism, meaning you are doubting. What are you doubting? towards historiographical concepts. So you're doubting the concepts that they really, so here we are talking about this concept of philosophy. So this actually did not happen. That's what they're saying. And this is the nihilistic concept, such as periodization, that this was the this period and this was the other period in history. So they are saying this really did not happen, but also of other concepts relating to development of a theory of history. So they were all nihiling it. Uh, they were all negating it. And consequently, so thus it apply, implies that there can't be only one method of history, but many. So we are saying that there can't be one way to interpret history, but many ways. There's a nihilistic concept, there's the scholastic concept, there's different ways that it is being interpreted. Historiographical nihilism has nothing against periodization in history and philosophy as a heuristic tool or a tool or for pedagogic purposes. So they are saying that this nihilistic concept is not talking about anything negative of periodization in history, but we are talking about it, that it is used for pedagogy purposes. Pedagogy means, again, when you're looking into the concepts of the rules and regulations of how things are written, etc. So that talks about pedio uh, the uh, uh, pedagogy. And here, when we are talking about uh, now this word, heuristic, heuristic is talking about a uh, trial and error method. So, but it reminds us that they are always false. So they are saying that these methods are not always true, they are false. And when we study the details of history, it becomes obvious that such grand statements, add, uh, so such grand statements means these uh, talking about uh, the period outline of periods as Renaissance, a futile, futile means useless and empty because it was all, uh, you know, not in reality. That's what nihilism is talking about. The arbitrariness, arbitrariness means, uh, you know, uh, when something is arbitrary means it has, it is following no facts, is just made out of the mind of somebody of assigning the term Renaissance philosophy to the period in time can easily be seen if we have a look at the historical development of the term itself. So now we are saying that this arbitrariness of giving the term, the name Renaissance philosophy means the philosophy after the Renaissance, which happened, which emerged, is actually seen how, how arbitrary and how, you know, just it is a creation of the mind if we look at the historical development of the term. So, you know, this is about uh, nihilism and Renaissance period and was there really a period of Renaissance, etc., which we talked about uh, today. And uh, that is what uh, uh, our reading was about today. So I hope you like the session and keep on reading. It's very, very important. So what was the main idea of this paragraph? The main idea was that did Renaissance really happen and did Renaissance philosophy really exist or was it man-made? So there was an argument to prove against it. 
that is the main idea for this uh, uh, thing and uh, for this uh, writing and the part that we read it was a long essay you can read the other part of it i'll share the link in the description and thank you very much for watching and please do comment and share with your friends and uh, thank you and bye bye take care